Uh, thank you, Senator Reed. Uh, Senator Lummis is recognized. Well, thank you, own. Mr. Chairman. I want to thank our witnesses for being here today. Um, every state is a border state right now when it comes to fentanyl, uh, including my home state of Wyoming, which um, one has to pass through both New Mexico and Colorado to get north to Wyoming. Uh, but we know that fentanyl, the precursor chemicals, and many of the traffickers themselves are bringing this poison into our country via the southern border. So it's the crisis at the border and the failed policies at the border that are the chief contributor to the deaths of more than 73,000 Americans in 2022. Fentanyl deaths in Wyoming have gone up significantly in recent years. In 2019, there were 11 due to fentanyl overdose by 2022. That number has risen to 53 and my state has the smallest population of any state in the nation. So uh, this trend across the country is terrifying. Um, Laramie County, uh, which is uh, Cheyenne, uh, is right along I-80, which is a ma major corridor east to west in the U.S. Last June, uh, police seized more than 9,000 fentanyl, fentanyl pills in a single bust. Uh, so we know that Interstate 80 is a corridor for trafficking uh, of um, these drugs once they get into the United States. So um, this is a very timely hearing, and I appreciate uh, you all being here today. Uh, we also know that uh, when there's a surge in migrants at the southern border, that uh, personnel are uh, focused on uh, processing them, and that takes attention away from the trafficking of drugs. So it has coincided that when there's a surge in uh, illegal migrants crossing the border, there is also a surge in the transport of illegal drugs, uh, fentanyl first and foremost among them. Uh, so we've got to get our southern border under control for the sake of Americans who are dying because of our open border policies uh, that will not uh, receive the attention from the current administration that it needs. Um, that said, a uh, couple of questions. Uh, Mr. Urban and uh, Mr. Yos, um, how well do federal law enforcement agencies, whether it's CBP or ICE, communicate and cooperate with state and local law enforcement when it comes to cases in which seized fentanyl has been traced back to cartels? So in, in a general sense, they cooperate well, but in terms of the threat and what we now face, they need to cooperate better. There needs to be more communication. There needs to be the advantage of taking advantage of the data that I talked about earlier. So the, the individual that was stopped with 9,000 pills, that should be immediately downloaded taken back to a larger data tank to determine who else that individual was connected with within the network. So whether it's at the border, we can leverage that for, for interdiction in a moment's notice, or the other individuals that he is connected to within, again, the Mexican cartel network with speed. Yeah. Now, just, I'll just add to that that the uh, working relationship between DEA and, and Homeland Security on this issue, the task force, uh, play a pivotal role in, in our investigation. And, and we do have a, a good, strong working relationship and sharing information. Uh, unfortunately, the, the demand is outpacing uh, what the bandwidth is. Yeah. So, Mr. Urban, how do we build and use technology um, so we can understand how cartels are operating and build a map of their activities? So, so again, C compared to when I targeted them with undercover money laundering activities with undercovers and wiretaps, right now the opportunity exists to intake that data, right? So whether we have large data tanks that we talked about, whether it's FBI, DEA, HSI, and the individual enforcement that happens out on the street, whether it's a car stop or the arrests, we want to pull that data in and it'll do two things. One, it maps out the network because like I talked about earlier, they are connected through transportation, communication, and financial movements of money. Two, 
with speed because if you had this, this platform set up within the federal law enforcement agencies here, you could kick out target packages to the field where they would be enabled to go effect arrests or enforcement. I, I want to thank you, gentlemen, for being here. My time is up, but I also want to thank you, Mr. DeFord, for using your uh, platform uh, as a celebrity to call attention to this issue. We're grateful for your attendance today. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Senator Van Hollen, a 